Hey, this is Chris. How's it going? Okay, so this is basically an introduction to using 3ds Max and Keyshot. Although this introduction will work on anything, really, it doesn't have to be Keyshot. So, first thing we can need is your 3D application. In this case, I have 3ds Max, and I have a file. Now, this is a piece that I've been playing around and working on. It's not a tutorial. And first thing you're going to notice is that it looks a bit like a colorblind Jack Dawes Christmas present. Um, you've got all these different kind of colors on it and stuff. There's a reason for that. Now, if I was to export this model and it was all, say, a second, bring this out. If this model was all basically like this, which is the default color that comes with 3ds Max, then when we get into Keyshot and we assign our materials, everything that has this color ID that you drag the material to it's all going to be this colour, so it'll either all be white or it'll all be the same metal or whatever. So what you do is you take each part that you want a slightly different colour, or might want a different colour even, and I've got all these crazy bright colours over here, mainly because I'm really colour blind. I've been informed reliably that these two colours are the same. And I've dragged these across, so obviously the four cylinders here, they're all the same colour. Then we've got this kind of front plate here, and these top parts here, and all your different tubes and stuff like that. Right, so exporting it first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this piece, simply because there's other pieces in my scene. So only export the parts that you need to export. Any reference models, you don't want to take into it. Also, if you're going to export anything before you do, you want to put on your XREF, not XREF, your XFORM modifier down here, okay? And then collapse it. So XFORM, don't worry about that. Okay, so put on your XFORM modifier, then right click and convert to Pitiful Polygon, okay? And by doing that, you won't have to worry about those parts turning inside out or wandering off or whatever. Because a lot of the time, if you just export your model straight off to Keyshot, you're going to get an interesting mess where you'll find that kind of this part will be over here randomly, and this part will be kind of up here. There'll be parts all over your model, and you'll not know why. So by doing this, most of the time you'll discover that your model actually goes into Keyshot as one piece. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, take this, go over here, export, export only the selected. And I'm going to export it to my desktop. You see, I've got all these things here. And I'm going to call it my Rocket Launcher KS01. Okay, nice easy name for me to remember. I know that it's my keys, my Keyshot export model, and I know that it's version one. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'll keep Turbo Smooth. I'm going to convert default. I'm going to preserve edge orientation. And that's about it. Now, if you want to, before it goes through as well, if you've got lots of kind of turbo smooth iterations applied, you can just collapse it by convert to editable poly. This will take a moment or two, depending on how many polygons you've got in your scene, remember. So just let it uh, take its few minutes to do so, especially if there's an auto save to you. I'll just pause. Okay, and unpause. And now you can see that these will collapse the way they should be. I remember what I said, now they're collapsed. X form reset. Right click. Convert to editable poly. Okay, so that should stop our pieces all flying around. That'll reset all our transforms and everything. Okay, that's what X form means, by the way, it's our transform reset. So, again, select all these. Right click, export. Export selected, and remember what I was going to call it. So rocket launcher KS01. Hit return, and then remember the things I gave it. Just click OK. And wait patiently. Now, when I'm in Keyshot in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to be doing a few pauses. I'm going to pause to load the model. I'm going to pause when it comes to a lot of on-screen time, because otherwise it will just eat my recording tool. It really will. And I mean, this is a fairly powerful computer. Okay, so that's gone. 
close my material thing. And I'm going to just reset my scene. I'm not going to save because it'll overwrite my original one file, which I'd rather it didn't. Now, if I go over to Keyshot, never used Keyshot before. You have your big screeny bit in the middle here. And then down here, you've got materials, colors, environments, backplates, textures, and your favorites. And then you've got various setups for materials over here. So, file, import. And I'm going to import my Rocket Launcher Chaos 01. I'll keep everything more or less as it was. And just wait patiently. Now, this will take a minute or two, so I'll just pause. Right then. So here we can see our piece actually inside of Keyshot. Um, now, as you can see, it's maintained all the different colors. If you have problems bringing things in with things still moving around, start attaching parts together. Um, that will obviously reduce parts flying around a bit and make things a little bit easier for you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the parts that I think should be gunmetal. So there's a gunmetal inside of Keyshot. Here it is, gunmetal here. So I'm going to just click it, drag it to here. And as you see, it's now attached this reflective gunmetal to our actual casing. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to come up with an interesting colour for the end pieces and the cowling. Now, one co one thing I could do is perhaps make a slightly darker or different looking gunmetal. Um, if I just a copy for my own reference I can create my own variations of this quite easily but um, I think I'm just going to go with the stuff that's in here for the minute so let's see I'm going to go down to a paint metallic paint open that up click X here to get rid of those and I want a nice powerful kind of it's jet black will probably do, just there. And then for the colour for the rest of the rocket launcher, it depends whether I'm going for something that's kind of fantastical, in which case I can go for just about any colour, or something that's more traditional. So here's a dark grey. If I put the dark grey there and then a cooler grey on the inside piece there. And then Maybe I could do these parts here, kind of slate grey. Look at all the greys, isn't that exciting? Well, we can perhaps change that a bit by doing something for the pipe work itself. I think red's probably a little bit too much. So that means blue probably will be as well. I've got some nice light coloured stuff. There we go. A nice white paint. So I'll put that one in there. And again, avoiding yellow, so maybe some more white. Let's come up with a nice basic colour scheme for the moment. Okay, so we've got our basic colour scheme here. Now the next thing we need to do is kind of come up with an environment that's going to work for us. So, if we go here to EN for environments, this will preload all the different ones we've got. And if there's not an environment that I like, then I can load up an environment map. So if I go here to load environment, and I've got some here. This is Park Platz, which is um, some HDRIs that now belong to 3D Palace. So I pick Park Platz High. You'll see it loaded up in this window. And now it applies all different reflectivity and lighting to this. Now, if I don't want the background in place for its beautiful shopping trolleys, I can then change my background to a simple colour, like so. I'll zoom in on it a bit. There we go. Now, remember what I said about kind of a more serious, real-world kind of application of this. Let's just go for some nice colours now instead. So I'll put red in there. Red and yellow are our natural warning colours, so I'm going to use red and yellow for the barrel. There we are. And I'm going to render this up now. So what I'm going to do is go to my render tool. Go to render. Now then, if you're using a trial version of this, or if you're using a slightly cut down version of this, you might not get all the rendering options, but I'm going to go for 
1280 by 695. It's up nice and big because it basically renders what it sees. Now then, for quality, we have a choice. You can either give it an amount of time you want it to render, the number of samples you want it to render, or advanced control. So for me, I'm going to have mine being 32 samples, six ray bounces, two anti-aliasing, three shadow. Uh, let's see. Anything else I need? Don't want any reflections. I can stick on global illumination. Maybe stick that to three as well. It'll up the render time, but it's worth it for the quality. And then all I have to do is just mash the render button, and we should get a nice output. So I'll just pause this. So there we go. The rendering's complete. This is um, how long did this take? Six minutes twenty-seven. Although. When I paused, I realised with global illumination on it was going to take two hours. Okay, because it could take one and a half to two hours. With global illumination turned on, but this will do for what I want. Um, as you see, the renders came out. It's nice and clean. We've got our reflections going on, and we've got all our different materials. I mean, I know I know that the model has a couple of areas that are issues, but that's a modelling issue. That's not a rendering issue. All in all, we've got something here that we could probably throw up onto. Um, you know, onto a Facebook group or stick in our gallery or whatever without feeling too embarrassed about it. And of course, there's plenty of tweaking that we can do if we want to. Um, to tweak materials, all you have to do is find the material that you were using. So if I go materials here, and there's our gun metal. So if I just uh, just double click on it, you can see that we can actually open it up. We can tweak our colours. We can make it rougher if we want to. It's by dragging the slider like that. Other things that we can do involve applying textures to it if we needed to, so we can make you know bumps which would give us our cracks and things, or opacity which would give us holes, and we can load labels onto it which we can then position on our model as well, which is useful for if you want decals and things. Anyway, this was just a simple rundown of how we use Keyshot. Um, hopefully the audios came out okay because I know that uh, this thing uses an awful lot of processing time. If you're wondering where, by the way, it puts your um, actual render files, they're usually in your program folder that you've installed this to under users slash your username slash my documents slash keyshot5 in this case slash renders. Okay, so it's not too difficult to find. Okay then, well, I hope you found that useful and informative, and uh, next time around we'll do something else fun. But until then, TTFN.